Hey everyone, it's Vintage Vinny, and welcome to another antique store haul. Got some great stuff from a day trip to Pennsylvania. Let's go ahead and check out what I got. So I spent, let's see here, so I spent $45.26, $63.60, $14.25, and $15.90. What that adds up to? Right now my mind can't do math. So first place I went to I spent probably a little over $100, maybe just under $100. So let's go ahead and check out what I got, shall we? I know people like these, so when I find them inexpensively, I do pick them up. It's an Aladdin thermos. It's a big one. And this one's got really nice uh, hints of red in it, so that would be great for the holiday season. It's clean. Um, I, do, I should, probably should let you all know, I apologize if my camera angle seems a little up close. Um, my other tripod decided to break on me, the little screw that holds the ball in place to keep it steady. Unfortunately, would not go back in because the tread was all messed up. So I'm now using my tabletop tripod to film all of this. But no biggie, I will be looking for one come our associate 20% off weekend, which is this upcoming weekend. These are great. Um, they're, they're drinking glasses, but they're supposed to look like big medicine cups. So we've got Mother's Night Cup, and it says... Dinner for eight, 15 ounces. House cleaning, 10 ounces. Six ounces for wash day blues. Four ounces for a shopping trip. And two ounces for dish pan hands. So mama is knocked out. The other one is for fisherman. It says the fisherman's nightcap. And it uh, looks like he's got a lady in his bed. So either that's his wife or his mistress. Let's hope it's the wife. And this one says, caught over limit, got caught. Forgot my worms. Forgot my license. Lost the daddy of them all. An eye opener. So that's a little bit more racy than the mother's nightcap. And those were 50% off of the original price. I know people like the old nut choppers. So I went ahead and picked this one up. And it's in relatively good shape. Um, it's got a red handle. See? It's got a red handle to it. A little bit of paint loss, but that's okay. It's even got the original wooden bottom to it, so that's awesome. I am doing another industrial sale with Katie of Vintage and Vinyl on the 9th of September. So not this upcoming Saturday, but the following Saturday. So make sure you all tune in for that. Uh, we always have a blast bringing you all really cool, rusty, crusty stuff. So make sure you all stay tuned for that. I got a pheasant lighter. This one was made by, looks like it says, A to C Super Deluxe Automatic Japan. I will look that up. Um, if it's nothing to put on eBay, go right to the live sale. I know you all love your Bailey's cups, so I picked this one up. And this one, it looks like it says it's from 1997. So that was a good price with a small discount. I also know that we love these old flower frogs. This is a big one. No maker's mark on it. That was a really good deal, so I had to pick that up. And then I also got some books. Actually, you know what? Let me go ahead and clear the rest of this stuff off so I don't break any of it. Alrighty, so I did get these two books. Uh, we've got the Ginny Doll Encyclopedia. It's the revised edition. It's by Sue Nettlingham Roberts and Dorothy Bunker. I got that 50% off of the original price. I did look it up and it's going for about $20. So I decided to go ahead and pick that up. And the other book that I got, which I am really excited to look at, is this cool book about Uncle Sam collectibles. So I see Uncle Sam things from time and time again, and, you know, it's nice to see what, you know, is out there, because sometimes there are things that you overlook or things that you just don't really pay attention to. And this book, again, was really 
a good deal, so I went ahead and bought that. That'll be fun to look through, I think. Alrighty, so these were in their original box. I really don't know the purpose of them. Maybe they're supposed to be planters or something. Or maybe you're supposed to actually put water in them, I don't know. But it's a, it looks like a dripware set uh, made in Japan. It's breadware pottery. So we have a watering can. It looks like we have a pail. So I thought those were really neat. Again, made in Japan. They have a hull look to them. So I thought those were great. And the fact that they're in their original box makes it even better. I did get a plethora of noisemakers. So you're going to see a lot of those at the sale. This one I'm probably going to end up keeping. I love that masquerade mask on here. So stinking cool. Oops, sorry. I bumped the camera there. Then we got this one. This one is very festive. Made in US. Love that. We got this one, which is very... Looks like we got a Perot and we got a Party Girl. So I love that. I don't know if that's made in Ohio. Yep, it says Ohio Metal Manufacturing Company. Sorry guys, I'm bumping the camera a lot. Don't mean to do that. And then we got this one. Love that. And then clown alert. Here's one with a bunch of dancing people on it. This one's more like a rattle. But those graphics are great. And then a dealer had a bunch of these. But I only picked up one because the other ones were in kind of bad shape, but I loved the silver. It's a Kodak photo sleeve. So, oh, be careful here so I can show it to you all. <clears throat> you push down on this button, this little button up there, and the photo slides out of here. So I'm not really sure of the age, but I do have some old photos or old cameras that I would like to uh, maybe put this with. So that's going to be a keeper for me. And then in kind of like a grab bag in one of the booths, I noticed, and I don't know why I didn't buy this the last time I was there. Forgive me, I'm moving something over. There were two tins in a bag. This one, unfortunately, is just modern. It's a Swiss coffee tin. It's got a barcode on it, so it's not terribly old at all. From Maxwell House. So that'll probably end up going in a donations bin. But this is the reason I bought it. I've got, it had this really cool emergency bulb and fuse kit by Ford. Love, love, love that. And let me open it up real quick so you guys can see inside of it. So what really attracted me to this tin was the color. I mean, you guys can see it's my favorite shade of blue, almost like a bluish green color. I just love that. But I decided to pop it open and see what was inside of it, aside from the bulbs and fuses, because I wanted to know where, what year it was possibly from. And then I found this member's name and address card, from, and it's stamped 1946 on it. And then there are a couple of other odds and ends in here. Then we got this little um, motor vehicle stamp. Probably it's a tax stamp, so that's really cool. Don't think... Oh, yeah, there's a date on it, June 30th, 1946. And then we've got this piece here. This is just a, a speed limit, 50 miles an hour. Suspension of operations of license for 90 days. Looks like somebody got a um, violation. And that was just left in here all these years. So I absolutely love this. I love that it has some paperwork and a tax stamp in there. It's for a 1937 Ford. Like, how neat is that? Like, that's just awesome. And like I said, the color is just amazing. So I haven't decided if I'll be selling that or not yet, because I love that. So when I'm out thrifting, antiquing, going to indoor flea markets and such, I do like to look for things for myself. I did find this really nice Le Creuset utensil holder. And this, I believe this is what they call their Caribbean blue. They have the original tag on the bottom. I did spend $12 on it because um, I love the color. And, you know, it's called turquoise. So, yes, it's very much a retro color. 
We do sell these at Marshalls and such. Um, I don't remember what the retail is on it. Um, it could be 20 bucks maybe. So I saved $8 and I supported a small business and I bought stuff to sell. So it will be paid for and not that $12 is a lot of money to begin with. But you go to a specialty cooking place and you could spend a lot of money on just one piece of Le Creuset. So the color's great. I love, like I said, I love, love, love the turquoise aqua Le Creuset pieces because uh, they fit kind of like a 50s theme to me. So, you know, I always say that I want to live in a more modern house because it's up to date with everything structurally wise and maintenance wise. Um, but I would totally deck it out in vintage. Like my kitchen would be blue and, you know, like I have all kinds of aqua colored utensils by KitchenAid and things like that. So I'm going with retro colors, but with more modern items, which... I can live with. I would decorate with like vintage utensils and everything. I just wouldn't use them per se. And I do that with like old appliances. Like I got toasters. I got blenders. Now some of the old appliances I will use because I got some of that stuff is way better than the stuff we have now. But I like the old colors with modern items because they look good and they give it a retro vibe. If that was too long of a spiel, I'm sorry, but that's just, that's me sometimes. <laughs> So now that I've shared this with you, let's go ahead and check out my two favorite finds from this particular antique mall. So these are my two favorite pieces that I picked up at this particular antique mall. Um, I got this really nice piece of pottery. I looked this up and apparently this is a piece of Zanesville pottery and it's arts and crafts style, probably from the deco era, and it's got a tree on it. There isn't a maker's mark on it. I don't know if this is Zanesville pottery to be exact, but it was a really good price, so I had to pick it up. I like this, but if it is worth some money, I more than likely will be selling this on eBay. Like I said, I did do a quick look up. Somebody's asking $200 or best offer for one of these, so I don't know if I were to list it for maybe like 50 bucks cheaper that somebody would buy it for that. It does have a couple of manufacturer flaws, like we got that right here. Uh, it's a little bit dirty on the bottom, like, but it is cleanable. Cleanable. It's, it would be easy to clean. Got a really cool look to it. And then I spotted this piece. And this was, I will say, this is for myself. Um, if I end up selling it at some point, I know I can. I did pay $38 for it. It's a 1960s Sprite thermometer. Plastic, but the actual thermometer is glass. I love that. And if I end up selling a bunch of the stuff that I bought and it pays for it, I'm perfectly okay with that. And this is what I'm talking about. Like, you know, I did pay up for this, like I said, $38, but I looked it up online and others were much higher than that. Or people were asking a lot more for it. I didn't see any solds, but I liked it for myself. So, you know, I supported a small business. I did pay up a little bit, but it's something I like and there are things that I bought to sell. So if it cuts down what I paid into it, I'm perfectly okay with that, even if it doesn't pay it off completely. So that's everything from the first mall. And then I went to two other places, didn't find a whole lot there, so that's why I'm including them in this video. Let's go ahead and check that stuff out. Alrighty, so at the next mall, I spent $14.25, and this is what it got me. I love this little Happy Holidays mailbox. I think that's really cool. It doesn't have a year or anything on it, so I'm not exactly sure of the age, maybe the 70s? But that image looks a lot older, doesn't it? So I haven't decided what I'm gonna be doing with that just yet, because I do like that, but we will see what happens. It may end up in a sale, it may not. These were in a booth that was 50% off, and they were already a great price to begin with. It's a bunch of candy canes, and they're made of like a really hard plastic, and they've got like a red ribbon wrapped around them. I bought these at another antique mall, like another set of these, and I thought somebody might like to have these for crafting. If you do Christmas assemblages, this would be great if you made like a candy land or like a winter light scene, I thought. So I have two lots of these. I may have to go fish them out from downstairs and see if I can find them. And then I'll probably offer the lots um, as like a 
one set like I have two available one price and then if you put in the number you get you can choose to have both of them or just one set that kind of a thing so those were great again great for crafters if you are into assemblage making or you just like to have cool little trinkets so this little peppy was in a um booth that was 50 percent off and he was less than a dollar she was less than a dollar so I got that price and then 50% off of that. So I thought she would make a great junk jar item. By the way, I've been meaning to share those with you all. You guys ask and I always forget. I've got a few of them going right now. So I probably need to go get my OG one so you guys can see it. Probably do a short on it because I really don't want to take all the contents out of it because I have it kind of laid out in there to a point where nothing is going to be messed up. And then I found these guys. These little Santa ornaments. I'm probably going to end up keeping one of them. I'll sell the other one. Love those. They're velvet. Probably Hong Kong made. Now this, <laughs> this is not old, of course. This is a um, Yardley London charcoal soap. My mom likes this stuff uh, because during the wintertime, you know, your skin can get kind of dry and such. So this was 40% off of an already low price, so I went ahead and picked that up. I probably should just tell you what I paid. It was $4, and then it was $40 off, so about $2.40. So maybe a little bit cheaper than what you can get it for in the store, but like I said, when I'm out and about, I like to look for you know gifts and things for myself, things for sales. It's always good to check out places that have a wide variety of everything, because you just never know. They may have something that you've been looking for for freaking ever. And you're like, of all the places that I've gone to to look for this, boom, here it is in the place I least expected it. So that's why I like to check out small little shops like this one. So I picked that up. That's going to be a stocking stuffer for her. She knows about it. Um, in this day and age, you know, it's not that we dislike surprises, at least in this household. It's just you want to make sure that somebody likes it and or wants it before you give it to them you know like there are some things that my mom knows about um she i bought her from the last 20 percent discount day we had i bought her some ugg um, cozy socks and i we had our i had my associate discount and then i had a gift card for them so i didn't pay nearly as much out of pocket for them anyway i wanted to make sure she liked them so i showed them to her and she said yeah i like these and i said good but you're not going to get them till christmas because I'd rather have something in my possession and know that they want it versus me not buying it and then risking on be gone. Because y'all know Marshalls and all those other stores. It's very impulsive. You don't buy it, then you're not going to see it again. <laughs> but anywho, moving along. This was really interesting. I have no idea what it's supposed to be. I mean, it's, it looks like maybe some kind of sailor. Or, no, maybe a butcher. Because he's wearing an apron. And he's got a fish. No maker's mark, but I thought he was really interesting. And he, too, was 40 off. He was from the same booth that I bought the Yardley charcoal soap from. So he was different, of course. I will look him up just to see if he's anything particularly special. But he was unique. So he had to come home with me. So the last place that I stopped at, I spent only $15.90, and that's with tax. So I did get some really cool vintage Christmas pieces. This is awesome. This is from the 70s. This is made by Los Angeles Pottery. It's a gingerbread man dish. No cracks or chips. It's adorable. So I had to pick that up. It was a really good price. And then I found this little Napco boy. It looks like he's supposed to be singing. He's got the Napco sticker on him, so he's probably older. That silver foiled. And he's even got real hair. Now this is awesome, and I do want to note, I did know it was damaged. It's a Relco Christmas candle holder, Santa sleigh with a reindeer. So the issues with it are the fact that one of the reindeer's antlers has been repaired, and then the letter E has been unfortunately broken off. I knew that when I bought them, I thought I could fix it. Um, this is actually post-fixing, quote-unquote. Um, I did re-glue the E down with super glue. Uh, the glue that was on it before, I think was maybe from, gosh, the days before super glue. So what I did is I, it felt loose enough to the point where I could uh, quote unquote break it off. 
And now it's super glued down and I'm gonna repaint or try to touch up the this part here. Maybe find some kind of filler for right there so it doesn't come off again and seal where the crack is in the E. If you guys look these up on eBay, these these are going for some pretty good money. Um, I will say I paid 12 for it. Again, I knew there was damage on it when I bought it. So I bought it knowing that I could somewhat make it look better than what it does or what it did. So I've started. Uh, I may see if I can find some cold paint and then I'll just touch up the E where the cold paint was uh, damaged from the breakage years ago. And then I will... Uh, touch up the or fill up the hole and touch up the crack so that way it doesn't show. So that is everything that I would like to share with you all for my shopping trip to PA. Thank you all so much for watching. Let me know down below in the comments section what were your favorite items from this haul.